Welcome once again. Right now, I'm going to be talking about 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Paul talks about how the gospel was more or less fertilized by persecution. He talks about being afflicted, talks about hardship, about enduring hardship because of the gospel, because of preaching the word of God. And don't forget that it says that those who live godly will suffer persecution. Verses 10 to 12 is also a very, very important passage. Paul says that we ought to walk worthy of God. We ought to walk justly, blamelessly, devoutly. We ought to walk holy. Think about that just for a minute, how powerful that is. Think about how holy God is. Think about how just God is. Think about how pure God is. And Paul goes as far as to say is we ought to walk worthy of God. That means we are to live our lives in such a way as to reflect the one we claim to believe in. Okay, we got to walk holy. Holy means separate, set apart, different than the world. People might think you're strange. Congratulations. That's what being holy is all about. It's about being different than the rest of the world. We don't think like the rest of the world thinks. We don't live like the rest of the world lives. We live holy, we live blamelessly, we live according to the guidelines and the instructions of our Father. In verses 14 through 16, Paul blames the Judeans for killing Jesus and persecuting and killing the prophets and persecuting the believers in his day. That is remarkable. Think about this for a minute. Why would people want to kill somebody that just preaches love and grace and all this kind of thing? They didn't just preach love and grace, okay? Jesus said himself in John chapter 7, verse 7, the world, think about this for a second, the world hates me, he said, because I testify that its deeds are evil. Jesus preached a lot of things that we don't even have in our scriptures today. The book of John is clear about this. If everything that Jesus did and said was written in books, even the world itself wouldn't be able to contain the books. But John chapter 7 verse 7 gives us the clue. The world hated Jesus. He wasn't this lovey-dovey hippie guy. He was a guy that testified against. He preached against the sins of the people. He says, I testify that their deeds are evil, okay? One preacher said, if Jesus preached the same way that pastors and bishops and priests preach today, he would never have been crucified. Think about that for a second now. All they preach about today is just love and grace and love and grace, but they don't preach repentance. Don't forget, repentance is the precursor to love and grace. In verse 18, we got something that's very, very interesting. Paul said that he wanted to go back to Thessalonica to visit these people, but he said, Satan hindered him. Can Satan hinder Christians? Can Satan hinder believers? Absolutely. Think about this. Even the apostle Paul was hindered by Satan. Moving on to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13 says, and the Lord made you increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Notice to the end. Obviously here, that phrase, the end, is talking about the goal of what needs to be established, about what needs to be accomplished. It's the goal. In the same way, in the book of Romans, Paul said that Christ is the end of the law. That means that Christ is the goal. He is the purpose of the law. The more you become like Christ, the more you obey the law. And the more you obey the law, the more you become like Christ. Why? Because Jesus obeyed the law fully. That's what made him the sinless, spotless lamb. The more you become like Jesus, the more you obey God's instructions. The more you obey God's instructions, the more you become like Jesus. 
And as always, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. How do you seek him? Read the scriptures, pray, keep on thinking about and meditating upon what you've read. Keep on thinking about him and praying. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.